Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at day one of the DataWorks Summit in the heart of Silicon Valley. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE, my co-host George Gilbert. We're very excited to be joined by our two next guests, going to be talking about a lot of the passion and the energy that came from the keynote this morning and some big announcements. Please welcome Madhu Kochar, VP of Analytics and Product Development and Client Success at IBM, and Jamie Engesser, VP of Product Management at Hortonworks. Welcome, guys. Thank Glad you. Glad to be here. First time on theCUBE, George and I are thrilled to have you. So, in the last um, six, eight months doing my research, um, there's been announcements between IBM and Hortonworks. You guys have been partners for a very long time, and announcements on uh, technology partnerships with servers and storage, and kind of presumably, oh, that gives Hortonworks, Jamie, a great opportunity to, to kind of tap into IBM's enterprise install base. But boy, today, socks blown off with this big announcement um, between IBM and Hortonworks. Jamie, kind of walk us through that. What is, or sorry, Maji, I'm going to ask you first. Walk us through this announcement today. What does it mean for the IBM Hortonworks partnership? Oh my God, what an exciting, exciting day, right? We've been working towards this one. So, uh, three main things come out of the announcement today. First is really the adoption of by Hortonworks of IBM uh, data science and machine learning, right? As you heard in the announcement, we brought the machine learning to our mainframe where the most trusted data is, now bringing that to the open source big data on Hadoop, great, right, amazing. Number two is obviously the, the whole aspects around our big SQL, which is like bringing the complex query analytics where it brings all the data together from all various sources and making that as uh, HTP and Hadoop and Hortonworks, really adopting that amazing announcement. Number three, what we gain out of this humongously obviously from an IBM perspective is the whole platform. Right, we've been on this journey together with Hortonworks uh, since 2015 with ODPI, and we've been all you know champions in the open source, delivering a lot of that. And uh, and as we start to look at it, it makes sense to march that as a platform and give to our clients what's most needed out there as we take our journey towards machine learning, AI, and enhancing our you know the enterprise data warehousing strategy. Awesome, Jamie. For from your perspective, um, on the product management side, what is this? What's the impact and potential downstream great implications for Hortonworks? I think there's there's two things. I think Hortonworks has always been very committed to the open source community, and I think with Hortonworks and IBM partnering on this, number one, it brings a much bigger community to bear to really push innovation on top of Hadoop. So I think that innovation is going to come through the community, and I think that partnership drives two of the biggest contributors to the community to do more together. So I think that's number one, is the community interest. The second thing is when you look at Hadoop adoption, we're seeing that people want to get more and more value out of Hadoop adoption, and they want to access more and more data sets. To number one, get more and more value, we're seeing the data science platform become really fundamental to that. And they're also seeing the extension to say, not only do I need data science to get net new insights, but I need to aggregate more data. And so we're also seeing the notion of, how do I use Big SQL on top of Hadoop, but then I can federate data from my mainframe, which has got some very valuable data on it, DB2 instances, and the, and the rest of the data repositories out there. So now we get a better federation model to allow our customers to access more of the data that they can make better business decisions on, and I can use data science on top of that to get net new learnings from that data. So. Yeah, and let me let me um, build on that, which is, let's say that I'm a telco customer, and and the two of you come together, you know, to to me and say, um, we don't want to talk to you about Hadoop, we want to talk to you about you know solving a problem where you've got data, you know, in applications in many places, um, including inaccessible stuff. You've had uh, you have a limited number of data scientists, you know, and, and the problem of cleaning all the data. And, and even if you build models, the, the challenge of you know, integrating them with operational applications. So what do the two of you tell me, the, the telco customer? Yeah, so 
maybe I'll go first. So the telco, right, the main use case, or the main application, as I've been talking to many of the largest telco companies here in U.S. and even outside of U.S., is all about their churn rate, right? They want to know when the calls are dropping, why are they dropping, why are the, the clients going to, to, to the competition and such. And there's so much data, right? The data is just streaming and they want to understand that. So I think if we bring the data science experience and machine learning to, to that data, that asset, doesn't matter now where the data resides, right? Hadoop, mainframes, wherever we can bring that data, you can do sort of a transformation of that, clean up the data, the quality of the data is there so that you can start feeding that data into the models and that's when the models learn, more data it is, the better it is, they train, and then you can really drive the insights out of it. And now data science, the framework which is available, it, it's like a team sport. You can bring in many other data scientists in the organization who could have different uh, different uh, analyst reports to go go render for, right, or provide results into. So it be, being a team support, being a collaboration, bringing together with that clean data, I think it's going to change the world, right? I think they can, the the business side can have instant value of the from from the the data they're going to see. Let me just sort of test test the edge conditions on that. So some of that data is, is streaming and you might apply the analytics in real time. Some of it is, I think as you were telling us before, sort of locked up as da dark, data. dark data. So the question is, how much of that, of that data, the streaming stuff um, and the dark data, how much do you have to land in a Hadoop repository versus how much do you just push the analytics out to, you know, and have it inform a decision? Maybe I can take a no. first thought on that. So I think, there's a couple things in that. There's, there's the learnings and then how do I execute the learnings. Yeah. So I think the first step of it is I tend to land the data and going to the telecom churn model, I want to see all the touch points. So I want to see the person that came through the website, he went into the store, he called into us. So I need to aggregate all that data to get a better view of what's the, what's the chain of, of steps that happen for somebody to churn. Once I end up diagnosing that, go through the data science of that to learn the models that are being executed on that data, and that's the data at rest, is what I want to do is build the model out so that now I can take that model and I can prescriptively run it in the stream of data so I know that that customer just hung up off the phone, now he walked in the store, and we can sense that he's in the store because we just registered that he's, he's asking about his billing details, and the system can now dynamically diagnose by those two activities that this is a churn high rate, so notify that teller in the store that there's a chance of him rolling out. If you look at that, that required, I'll say, the machine learning and data science side to build the analytical model, and it required the data flow management and streaming analytics to consume that model to make a real-time insight out of it to ultimately stop the churn from happening. Mm -hmm. Let's just give the customer a discount at the end of the day. That type of stuff. So you need to marry those two. It's interesting that you, it, it, that was, you articulated that very clearly, although then the question I have is, um, now not on the technical side, but on the go-to-market side, you guys have to work very, very closely. And this is not, this is calling at a level that I assume is not very normal for Hortonworks. And it's something that, you know, is a, a natural sales motion for IBM. So maybe yeah. I'll first speak up and, I, and then I'll let you add some color. So I, when I look at it, I think there's a lot of natural synergies. IBM and Hortonworks have been partnered since day one. Yeah. We've, we've always continued down the path. If you look at it, and, I, and I'll bring up community again and open source again, but we've worked very well in the community. I think that's incubated a really strong and fostered a really strong relationship. And I think at the end of the day, we both look at what's going to be the outcome for the customer and working back from that, and we tend to really engage at that level. So what's the outcome, and then how do we make a better product to get to that outcome? So I think there is a lot of natural synergies in that. I think to your point, there's lots of pieces that we need to integrate better together, and we will join that over time. And I think we're already starting with the data science experience, a bunch of integration touch points there. I think you're going to see in the informa information governance space with Atlas being a key underpinning, and information governance catalog on top of that, ultimately moving up to IBM's unified governance. We'll start getting more synergies there as well, and on the big SQL side. So I think when you look at the different pods, there's a lot of synergies that our customers will be driving and that's, I think, what the driving factor is, yeah. along with the organizations are very well aligned. And VP of engineering, so there's a lot of in integration <laughs> points, you know, which are already identified, and Big SQL is already working really well on the Hortonworks HDP uh, platform, right? We got good integration going, but I think more and more on the data science, and I think in end of the day, we end up talking to very similar clients. 
right? So going as a joint go-to-market strategy, it's it's a win-win. Uh, Jamie and I were talking earlier, I think in, in this type of a partnership, A, our community is winning and our clients, right? And you know, so really, really good solutions And that's what it's there. all about. Speaking of clients, you, you gave a great example with Telco. When we were talking to um, Rob Thomas and Rob Bearden earlier on the program today, they talked about, you know, the data science conversation is at the C-suite. So walk us through an example of whether it's a telco or maybe a healthcare uh, organization. What is that conversation that you're having? How are, how is a telco helping foster um, what was announced today and this partnership? You want to take maybe, it? maybe I'll start. So when, when we look at in a telco, I think there's a, there's a natural evolution. And I think when we start looking at that problem of how does a telco consume and operate data science at a larger scale? So at the C-suite, it becomes a people process discussion. There's, there's not a lot of tools currently that really help the people and process side of it. It's, it's kind of an artist capability today in the data science space. So what we're trying to do is, I think you mentioned team sport, but also give the tooling to say, there's step one, which is we need to start learning and training the right teams and the right approach. Step two is start giving them access to the right data, et cetera, to work through that. And step three, giving them all the tooling to support that. And tooling becomes things like TensorFlow, et cetera, th things like uh, Zeppelin, Jupyter, a bunch of the open source community evolved capabilities. So first, learn and training. The second step in that is give them the access to the right data to consume it, and then third, give them the right tooling. And I think those three things are kind of helping us to drive the right capabilities on it. But that, to your point, elevating up to the C-suite, it's really, they think, people process, and I think giving them the right tooling for their people and the right processes to get them there. It's kind of moving, moving data science from an art to a science, as I would argue at a top level. About, on the client success side, how instrumental, though, are your clients, like maybe on the telco side, and actually fostering the development of the technologies or helping IBM make the decision to standardize on HTTP as, as their big data platform? Oh, huge, huge. A lot of our clients, especially as they are looking at the big data, you know, many of them are actually helping us, um, uh, you know, they're committers into the code, right? They're adding, uh, providing, uh, if we can move fast enough in the engineering, they are coming up and saying, hey, we're going to help and uh, code up and do some code development with you. They've been really pushing our limits. A lot of clients, uh, actually, I end up working with on the Hadoop site is, is uh, you know, like, for, like for, for example, my entire information integration suite is very much running on top of HTTP today. And so they are saying, okay, what's next? We want to see better integration. So as I called a few clients yesterday saying, hey, you know, under embargo, this is something going to get announced. Amazing, amazing results, right? And they're just uh, very excited about this. So we are starting to get a lot of push. And actually, the, the clients who do have large development community as well, like a lot of banks today, they write a lot of their own applications. We're starting to see them, uh, you know, co-developing stuff with us and becoming the committers. I agree. You have a question? Well, <laughs> um, if I just were to jump in, how do you see over time the mix of apps starting to move from, you know, completely custom developed, sort of the way, you know, the the uh, original big data applications were all written, you know, down to the metal at, in MapReduce. And for shops that don't have a lot of data scientists, how are we going to see applications become sort of more self-service, more prepackaged? So maybe I'll give a little bit of perspective, and I'll, I'll maybe give some perspective. So right now, I think IBM's got really good synergies on what I'll call vertical solutions to vertical organiza to organizations, yeah. financial, etc. I would say Hardenworks has took a more horizontal approach. We're more of a platform solution. An example of one where it's kind of marrying the two is if you move up the stack from Hortonworks as a platform to the next level up, which is Hortonworks as a solution, one of the examples that we've invested heavily in is cybersecurity in an Apache project called Metron. Less about Metron, more about cybersecurity. People want to solve a problem. They want to, they want to defend an attacker immediately. What that means is we need to give them out-of-the-box models to detect a lot of common patterns. So what we're doing there is we're investing in some of the data science and prepackaged models to identify attack vectors and then try to resolve that or at least notify you that there's a concern. It's an example where the data science behind it 
prepackaging that data science to solve a specific problem. That's in the cybersecurity space in that case. Happens to be horizontal where Hortonworks' strength is. I think in the IBM case, there's a lot more vertical apps that we can apply to. Fraud, adjudication, et cetera. So it sounds like we're really just hitting the tip of the iceberg here with the potential. We want to thank you both for joining us on theCUBE today, sharing your excitement about this deepening, expanding partnership between Hortonworks and IBM Maju and Jamie, thank you so much for joining George and I today on theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa thank and you. George. Appreciate it. Thank you. And for my co-host, George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching us live on theCUBE from day one of the DataWorks Summit in Silicon Valley. Stick around, we'll be right back.